Hello everyone. Uh, I hope all of you are working hard on assignment two, and it's just about one week time uh, you need to submit it. In this video, I will be clarifying a couple of issues that uh, I might think that some of you are probably confused of. So you are already familiar with the assignment, what you are supposed to do. So it's a case study on Starbucks coffee. And you know that based on the problem and based on the data set you are given, you have these five questions that you need to answer. So what you need to do is you need to write the data analysis report uh, with five hypothesis tests and where you will be basically answering these two research questions. One is what is or are the causes of a Starbucks coffee failure in Australia and how could a Starbucks coffee compete with established chains such as McCafe and Gloria Gents. And this is the questionnaire is given and you are also given like a data set. This is the report structure you are advised to follow. First of all is executive summary. Keep it in mind that writing an executive summary is a challenging job. Sometimes we might think that, uh, well, executive summary uh, is an easy task to write. However, that's not. The challenging in the sense that you need to provide a brief summary of the entire report. That means it should cover everything in your report. However, uh, it also should not be uh, too much big, like uh, probably you should restrict it within 250 words. So uh, your executive summary should start with what you are doing, like what this research is all about or what this report is all about, what you are doing. Then it should cover how are you doing. If this is what you are doing, then how you are doing. What is your data? What is your method of analysis? What is the sampling technique you are using? and uh, what what other estimation and uh, research factors are there and also what are your key findings this is the important part that you write down your key findings and what are your recommendations based on your key findings and if there is any limitations of the report okay so i repeat that executive summary should start with what you are doing then how you are doing then what result you received and if you have any recommendation on those. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, executive summary should be written last, that means after writing all other sections. Introduction, well, writing an introduction is not I mean, difficult because in introduction, you should provide a background of, of the case study, like what is the problem uh, Starbucks is having and um, what is the issue, then uh, you also can include your research objective or the, the main research agenda in your introduction. Research design. Uh, so some of you are probably confused that what you should write down in your research design section. Well, uh, in research design section, you should write down almost the same thing you wrote down in your assignment one. If you can remember in assignment one, you wrote down your the research proposal and there was a, a research design section. So you should have a pretty much similar research design section here. That should indicate the, the way the research has been done. The difference is in assignment one, you had to write down everything, like what is your data, what is your sample size, what is your sampling technique, everything. But in this case, if you if you see carefully that your sample size is given, for example, 500 customers were sent the survey for 50 responded, responded and the sampling technique is given, that is random sample. Okay, so now what you need to do, these are the basic information you are given. Sampling technique, sample size, or an idea about the overall uh, target population. So based on this basic information you are given, you, you need to write down the whole research design section by developing some stories yourselves. Okay, that means when it's a random sample, 
just extend this discussion that why you are using random sampling sample, what's the benefit of random sample over the other sampling techniques, or if there is any limitation associated with this sampling, how do you handle this limitation? Sample size is, for example, 500. Why do you think this 500 is sufficient? And how this 500 sample size has been derived? And you also should uh, indicate some ethical issues relating to data collection, storing, and um, like the use of the data subsequent to the research. So my main point is try to develop some stories in research design section based on the information you are given. One point I will suggest that don't criticize uh, the information that are given, rather try to defend them. That means what I'm trying to say is, my previous experience says that sometimes a student write, okay, sample size is 500. Um, we don't, I don't think that that's a sufficiently large sample size. You cannot write this because when you are writing a report based on a sample size of 500, you cannot criticize this sample size. So, since the sample size is given 500, try to justify it as much as possible. That's what you, you should do. Try to justify random sample as much as possible. Okay. The next one is hypothesis. The next section you write down is a hypothesis development. In hypothesis development, you should have at least one hypothesis for each of the questions. For example, you have five questions, you should have five hypotheses. Okay, and hypothesis should be very clear. The, you should write down your null hypothesis clearly and a very clear alternate hypothesis. And by this time, probably you all know that when we write down our null hypothesis, we actually write down the status quo, or you know, like there is no difference between the sample and population, or there is no relationship. So if you are uh, finding out the if the difference between two variables is significant or not, your null hypothesis should be there is no difference between these this. And alternate hypothesis should be there is a difference. If you are finding out relationship between two variables, then your null hypothesis should be there is no relationship between X and Y. And alternate hypothesis should be there is a relation between X and Y. Okay? This is how you write down your null and alternate hypothesis. Once again, I have seen that the students make a mistake. They write down the null and alternate hypothesis other way around. That means like they write down that null hypothesis is there is a relationship and alternate is there is no relationship. No, that's that's wrong. Because if you write down your null and alternate hypothesis in this way and conclude on the basis of your statistical result, that will be a wrong conclusion. So your null hypothesis should be there is no difference or no relation an alternate should be there is a difference or there is a relation like this. The next one is a statistical technique and justification. So in this case, uh, like you have five hypotheses, for each of these hypotheses, you should write down what statistical technique you are using for testing this hypothesis. Okay? For example, like you should write that hypothesis one, we are using uh, t-test or ANOVA. Hypothesis 2, we are using ANOVA or regression. Hypothesis 3, we are using regression or correlation. What statistical technique you are using? And you need to sufficiently justify that. That is important. You need to sufficiently justify that. Okay? Uh, I just give you a clue that when you um, justify a particular statistical technique, first of all, you should write down that what you are doing. For example, you can say that in hypothesis one, we are uh, testing that if there is a significant difference between the average satisfaction of male and female. So this is what you are doing. If there is a significant difference between average satisfaction. So you should write down that first, that what you are doing. The second, you should write down what are the variables involved, that we are testing the average customer satisfaction between male and female. The hypothesis involved are customer satisfaction and that are grouped between male and female. So what are the variables involved? Then you should write down what is the measurement scale of the variable. Like customer satisfaction, that is uh, an interval variable or ratio variable, whatever, and they are divided between two categorical group, male and female. So you should clearly write down 
that if it's, it's an interval, nominal, ordinal, or whatsoever. And finally, based on these three information, write down that whether you are using TTS, ANOVA, regression, or so on. So I repeat that. First, you, you should write down what you are doing. Second, you should write down what are the variables involved. And third, you should write down the measurement skills of the variable. Based on these three, you should justify that what statistical technique you are using. Then results, statistical and non-statistical interpretation. So in this section, you should find, or you should first of all present your result. You should copy your result from Excel and paste them in Word, and then provide a statistical and non-statistical interpretation. This is pretty straightforward. When it's a statistical interpretation, you should clearly write down what is your p-value? Is it higher or lower than the significance level? And whether you accept or reject your null hypothesis. Clearly write down all of this information. What is your p-value? If it is less or more than the significance level, and if you accept or reject your null hypothesis. And in non-statistical interpretation, you should write down what is the meaning that you accept your null hypothesis or reject your null hypothesis? For example, in your statistical interpretation, if you write down that average satisfaction between male and female, you reject your null hypothesis. So in non-statistical interpretation, you should write down that we reject the null hypothesis that there is no difference between customer satisfaction between male and female. It means that there is a significant difference between customer satisfaction of male and female and then you should write down that who are more satisfied because if you say that there is a significant difference between customer satisfaction of male and female then you must write down that males are more satisfied than females or females are more satisfied than males okay so that should be your non-statistical interpretation then analysis and summary of the statistical result this section is important because my uh, experience is that students struggle to write down this section. Keep it in mind that in the previous section, you already have presented all your results and you already have provided all the statistical and non-statistical interpretations. Now here, don't repeat them again. For example, like uh, hypothesis one, this is result, hypothesis two, this is result, hypothesis three, this is result, and repeat them again. No, that's not what you are expected in this section. In this section, what you are expected is a very concise and coherent synthesis or summary of all the results you have. I think you didn't forget that your two research questions are what are the causes of a Starbucks failure and how could Starbucks compete with other uh, competitors. Now, I may suggest that in this section, you should have two paragraphs. First paragraph should uh, address the first question and second paragraph should address the second question. Now, try to combine all of your results together to answer question number one in the first paragraph and question number two in the second paragraph. So it's important that how you summarize your results and bring out some common uh, conclusion from the results. In recommendation, you should provide some recommendation to uh, Starbucks. Keep it in mind that each and every recommendation should be linked to one of your results. Don't recommend anything that has not been examined and that has not been found in your statistical test. Okay. Sometimes I have seen that student write, oh, they should um, they go for expanding the market or uh, they should shut down some of their uh, outlets. Question is, did you check them? Did you test them? If not, then don't recommend anything like this. So each recommendation should be based on uh, one of your findings. And last of all, uh, you should follow APS6 referencing style. So that's the end of my discussion on assignment two. Uh, I wish you all the best with this assignment and don't hesitate to let me know if you still have any question relating to this. Thank you very much.